In this video, we're going to look at the equation of a straight line in the form y is equal to mx plus c. We've seen this type of equation in the past. So an example might be y is equal to 2x plus 1. If we were asked to graph this now for x between negative and positive 3, the approach that we would have used before was to simply draw a table of values. So we would have had the x values and the corresponding y values. So if I go ahead and just plot these now, what we can have are values of x. So we'll have values of x from negative 3 to positive 3. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. We would have corresponding y values and we would simply substitute the values in now for x. I generally start at 0, 2 lots of 0. So when x is 0, 2 lots of 0 is 0, plus 1 is going to give me 1. When x is equal to 1, 2 lots of 1 is 2, plus 1 is going to give me 3. When we have now 2, 2 lots of 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. You might notice that this is increasing by 2 each time. This is the number in front of the x, which we call the gradient. The next one, therefore, is going to be 7. If we didn't want to calculate from here, we would just now subtract 2 each time. So we'd have negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5. These will form a straight line. So if we plot it for points, this is going to be negative 3, and then negative 5 is going to be just here. If I take negative 2 for x and y as negative 3, that is going to be just here. When x is negative 1, y is going to be negative 1, which is just there. When x is 0, y is going to be 1, which is just there. When x is 1, y is going to be 3, which is just here. When x is going to be 2, we've got y is equal to 5. And of course, we could put the 3, 7 on if we wanted. This is just part of the graph. If we're not told values of x, this will continue infinitely now in the negative and positive directions. So we can just go ahead and label this up. And this is the graph of y is equal to 2x plus 1. I've shown it for values from x is negative 3 to positive 2. If we look at this closely, this value of 2 gives us what we call the gradient. The gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So if we just pick two points here, this might be the easy one to see, or this, it's entirely up to you which you'd prefer to see, or even this point right here. If we look at this, the change in x over the change in y. So we can see that this goes through one of the squares, and this does. This one goes up to for every one it goes across. We can say that the gradient, which we call m, is going to be 2 over 1. That gives us a value right here. We say now that the number in the numerator is the change in y, so change in y, over now the change in x and that gives us the gradient so change in x sometimes you might hear this being called the rise over the run or delta y over delta x so for example now if i had a line and let's draw another line let's just put another one on here and my line did something like so so we went here we can see with this one now we have a gradient of three so this one is going up 3 for every one it goes across. So we can see now these points on here, and I'll just put them on. So we could write now from here, we can see that it goes up 3 for every one it goes across. It goes up 3 for every one it goes across. So we'd say that now the gradient m is going to be equal to 3. With this one as well, we've got this interesting point right here. This point is going to be 0, 1. If we look at the graph, this value of 1 gives us now the y-intercept. So if we had 2x plus 3, we would have the same gradient of this line, but it would go through the point just here. If we had 2x minus 1, it would have the same gradient, but it would go through the point just here of 0, comma, minus 1. So when we write a line in the form y is equal to mx plus c, m is the gradient, so this is the gradient, and this is the y-intercept. So we can now write that m is the gradient, so let's just put this on, so gradient, 
and this is the y-intercept. This is the constant. This is the value when x is equal to 0. So if I just drew another line on here, let's go ahead and draw another line. Um, I'm going to put this one on and we will do something like so. So with this one, I'm going to put it there and we'll just keep going here. So if we looked to find the equation of this line, admitted it's only a line segment, we can see the gradient, the change in y over the change in x. It's going up one for every one it goes across. So we have now a gradient of one. So we could say this is y is equal to one lot of x and it crosses the y uh, the y axis at the point 0, 2. So this would be 1x plus 2, which we'd simply write as y is equal to x plus 2. It has a gradient of positive 1 and it cuts the y intercept at 2. So that's just a brief introduction. Generally speaking, we can put the equation of a straight line in this form. So let's go ahead and look at some lines. So we've got now a graphing calculator here. And I've got on the line y is equal to x. So we can see this point here. We've got 1, 1. We've got 2, 2. So the gradient of this line now is going to be 1. And it passes through the origin. Therefore, it would just simply be y is equal to x. If I increase this value now, this has the same gradient. But it passes through the point 0, 1. So this now would be y is equal to x plus 1. This is x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 1, we would have x minus 2, and so on and so forth. So this is the line y is equal to 1x. If I now increase the gradient, the gradient has gone now to 2. So we can see the change in y over the change in x, the rise over the run. It's gone up 2 for every 1 it goes across. So if we just move it, we can see now it goes up 2 for every one it goes across, it goes up 2 for every one it goes across, and so on and so forth. So this would be y is equal to 2x. If I now add 1, that's 2x plus 1, because it passes through the point 0, 1. 2x plus 2, 2x plus 3, and then if we come down, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 2, and so on and so forth. We can, of course, have fractional gradients. We could have one half x. So that would go up one for every two it went across. We can also have negative gradients. So if I change the gradient now, that gradient is minus one. It goes down one for every one it goes across. It goes down one for every one it goes across. This would be the line y is equal to minus or negative x. This would be y is equal to negative 1 plus x, or 1 minus x, negative x plus 2, negative x plus 3, negative x minus 1, negative x minus 2. So that's a gradient now of minus or negative 1. This is a gradient of negative 2. It goes down 2 for every one it goes across. All I'm doing here is picking points. I'm picking this point where it goes to an exact point and this one. Down 2 for every one it goes across. Down 2 for every one it goes across. So this would be y is equal to negative 2x. We don't have a plus c on the end because c, in this case, for y-intercept is naught. If we look at that, that is going to be negative 2x plus 1, negative 2x plus 2, negative 2x plus 3. This one right here, we've got negative 2x minus 1, negative 2x minus 2, negative 2x minus 3. Hopefully that gives you some idea. Let's go ahead and take the gradient back to 1. So that's the gradient of 1, and we're back to y is equal to x. So if we looked at a gradient of 1 half, let's do that. Uh, let's just go there. That is a gradient of 1 half. This goes up 1 for every 2 it goes across. It goes up 1 for every 2 it goes across. The change in y over the change in x is 1 half. If we looked at this one, we've got y is equal to x. This one now, if I look at this one, we have a gradient. It goes up 3 for every 2 it goes across. So if we looked at this now, it goes up 3 for every 2 it goes across. 
So this would be a gradient of positive one half. So we could say this is y is equal to one half x plus zero. One half x plus one, one half x plus two, one half x plus three, and so on and so forth. We can, of course, have negative fractional gradients. And if I go the other way, this now is going to be a gradient of negative a half. If we look, it goes down one for every two it goes across. All I'm doing are picking those points. So this would be now either negative one half x plus one or one minus one half x. Negative one half x plus two. So there we go. That is the equation of a straight line in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So let's have a go at a few questions. In each of the following questions, say what the gradient of the line is. When we're trying to evaluate the gradient, we always put it in the form y is equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. If it's not in this form, put it in the form. So here we can see that the gradient of this one is going to be 1. We've got 1x just here, so the gradient is 1. This is in the form y is equal to mx plus c, so we can see that m is going to be positive 3. So this one will go up 3 for everyone it goes across. We've got negative 5x, so the gradient is negative 5. We need to be careful with this one. It's not in the form y is equal to mx plus c. If it was, we could write it as negative 4x plus 3. That now gives us a gradient of negative 4. A common misconception here is that the gradient is 3. We need it in this form right here. If we now look at the next one, we've got 2y is equal to 4x plus 3. We need this in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. That's going to give me y is equal to 2x plus 3 over 2. So the gradient on this one is positive 2 and the y-intercept is positive 3 over 2. So we'd have a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept now of 0, 3 over 2. This one, I'm going to start with 3y is equal to 6x minus 5. I want it in the form y is equal to mx plus c, so I want 1y dividing both sides by the 3, 2x minus 5 over 2. So a positive gradient again of 2. If we look at this one, I'm going to divide both sides by the 3. So if we're purely evaluating a gradient, we can say the gradient is negative 5 over 3. Dividing this like so will give us that value. OK, let's just rearrange this one. 4y is equal to negative x plus 6. I'm then going to divide both sides of the equation by the 4. So we get negative 1 quarter x, or if you like, x over 4 plus 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So the gradient of this line is negative 1 quarter. So that one is going to go down 1 for every 4 it goes across. With this one, we need to put this in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So I'm going to add the 2x to both sides and subtract the 3. So y is going to be equal to positive 2x minus 3. We have a gradient of positive 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. With this one, I'm going to add y to both sides, so that gives me 2x minus 3 is equal to y, and we have exactly the same equation. If we rearrange this one, I want y is equal to mx plus c, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides and subtract 3. y is equal to negative x minus 3, and the gradient is going to be negative or minus 1. We can see that this one has a gradient of negative 1 and it's going to go down 1 for every one it goes across. This one right here, I want to inform y is equal to mx plus c, so I'm going to have 2y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. You could argue that you can divide that equation by 2 from the start, which is perfectly fine. If I did that now, I'd have y is equal to negative x plus 1. Gradient of negative 1, y-intercept, of positive one. This one right here, just subtracting the 2x from both sides, 2y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Dividing by the 2, y is equal to negative x plus 1 half, gradient of minus or negative 1. 
This one, just subtracting x from both sides, gradient of negative 1. This one's slightly more interesting. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and add 3y. So 4x minus 4 is equal to 3y. Dividing both sides now by the 3, we have 4 over 3x minus 4 over 3 is equal to y. So the value of the gradient m is going to be 4 over 3. Remember, we could write that like so if we wanted. That's just a different way of writing it. This one right here, I'm going to add the 3y to both sides and subtract 2. So we can say that x minus the 2 is equal to 3y. Dividing both sides by 3, we've got 1 third x minus 2 over 3 is equal to y. y is equal to mx plus c. Gradient of positive 1 third. Okay, we're asked to write down the gradient and y-intercept of each line. So remember, we're always going to put these in the form y is equal to mx plus c. The first one is gradient of positive 4, so that is going to be m is equal to 4. We've got a value of c to be negative 1. So we can say the gradient of 4, uh, the gradient is 4, and this is going to cross the y-axis at 0, comma, negative 1. This one, in the correct form, the gradient, m, is going to be one third. So this will go up one for every three it goes across, and it will cut the y-axis now at the point where y is three, so it will cut at zero, comma, three. This one, I'm just going to rearrange in the form y is equal to mx plus c. I don't know why I've got y is equal to mx plus one. Um, and we can write this as y is equal to negative x plus six. We've got a gradient of negative 1, so that is the value of m, negative 1, and this is going to cross the y-axis at 0, comma, positive 6. If we look at this one, that's in the correct form. Gradient is going to be equal to negative 2, and we're going to have a y-intercept of negative 3 fifths. So we've gone ahead and simply written out now the y-intercept and the gradient of each of these lines. OK, let's look at some more questions. We're asked to write down the equation of the straight line with the given gradient which passes through the given point. There are two different ways we can do this. So what we're looking at now is the following. We're looking at now simply substituting these in to an equation. We can either use y is equal to mx plus c or we can go ahead and use, and I'll put it on this side, y minus y1 is equal to m, which is the gradient, multiplied by x minus x1. I actually prefer this particular method, but you can use either. At this level, this one is often used. So let's go ahead and use this one right here. What we do is substitute in the values, and we will go ahead and solve for c. So if I've got a gradient of 2 and it goes through the point 4, 1, I can say that the y-coordinate is 1 and that will be equal to the gradient, which is 2, multiplied by the x-coordinate, which is 4, and then we're going to have plus c. So what we can see from here now is that 1 is going to be equal to 8 plus c. I'm going to subtract the 8 from both sides and that's going to give me c is equal to negative 7. So with this one, we simply solve now for the value of c, and we put the equation back together. So y is going to be equal to m, well, the gradient is 2, then we have the x minus 7. So that's that way of doing it. If we do it this way, what we're going to have is y minus the y-coordinate, which is 1, and that will be equal to the gradient, which is 2, multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate, which is 4. All we do at this stage is expand the brackets and add 1 and then tidy up. So y minus 1 will be equal to 2x, then we're going to have minus 8, and at this stage we simply add for 1 to both sides and put this in the form 2x minus 7. So we can see that either way around we get the same answer. We could actually put this one in a different form. The equation of a straight line can be written in the form ax plus by, 
plus C is equal to zero. In your later studies, you might use this particular approach. So we could write this one now, subtracting y from both sides, zero is equal to two x minus y minus seven. So the value of a would be two, the value of b would be negative one, and the value of c would be negative seven. So let's go ahead now and look at a couple more of these. So if we look at this one, we've got a gradient five and a point two comma negative five. So using this particular approach, we can say the y coordinate is negative 5, and that's going to be equal to now the gradient, which is going to be 5. We're going to sub in the x coordinate, and then we're going to add the c. So from here, we can say that that's negative 5 is going to be equal to 10 plus c. Subtracting the 10 from both sides, we'd have now negative 15 is equal to c. So I can put this back together and we can say that this is y is equal to mx, or m is 5, 5x minus 15. If we had gone for this particular approach, we would have had y subtract the negative 5, which means that we're going to add it. And that will be equal to the gradient, which is 5, multiplied by x minus the x coordinate of 2. So if I just now write this as y plus 5 is going to be equal to 5 5x minus 10. We need to subtract 5 from both sides, so y is equal to 5x minus 15, as we can see. So all we're doing is simply substituting those in. Let's finish off with one slightly harder one, and then I think we will go ahead and do a bit, um, a bit of graphing of these. Uh, in fact, we might come back to that um, as we go. So let's just look at one of these ones right here. Let's have a look at this one. So we'll use this one now using y is equal to mx plus c. So the, uh, the y coordinate is going to be negative 7. Let's just change that colour. That's not easy to see. So we're going to have now negative 7 will be equal to the gradient, which is negative 1 fifth. Then we're going to have the x coordinate of negative 3. And then we're going to have plus c. So all I'm doing is simply substituting the values in right here to go ahead and solve for c. So we've got negative 7 will be equal to 3 over 5, just multiplying these two, plus the c. So I could write this now as an equivalent fraction as negative uh, 35. Let's, uh, what's that going to be? 30 uh, multiplying that up. We need to multiply that. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, well, I can just subtract this if I really wanted. Um, and I'll, um, no, in fact, we'll put this into fifths. Uh, I think that's better. I uh, don't know why I'm bothering arguing with myself here. It's easier to put it into fifths. So we'll write this now as negative 35 fifths. So negative 35 fifths will be equal now to 3 fifths plus C. So that's going to give me subtracting the 3 fifths on both sides, negative 38 over 5 is equal to c. So we can say that the equation of this line now is going to be y is equal to negative 1 fifth x and then we're going to subtract from that 38 over 5. So that's the equation of the line that goes through the point just here. Okay, let's now have a look at actually naming or at least finding the equations of some lines. So let's start now, we'll start with a nice one. Let's start with this red one here. What we're looking to do is write the equation of this red line in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So the easiest way to do this is pick two clearly visible points that pass through now the coordinates are on an exact value. So we can see right here. So if we look, it's going up two for every one it goes across. I could pick this point here as well. So we can see that the gradient of this line is going to be 2 over 1. So we would say the gradient is 2. We can see that it passes through the point 0, 1. So I can say now that the red line, and I'll just write it in red, we're going to have y is equal to the gradient, which is 2, x plus now the 1. And that's it. OK, if we look at the green line, let's grab up the green line and we'll go ahead and find that. Here is the green line. So we can see now, if I pick this one right here, let's grab that, that goes through the point here, 1, 2, and then we've got this point just here. So if we look, this has a gradient, it goes up 4 
for every one it goes across. So all I've done is pick two clear points that it passes through. It passes through the point here, which is going to be 1, 2. And it passes through this point, which is going to be 0, minus 2. So if we looked at the gradient of this line, the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So if we just put this down, m is the change in y. So change in y over the change in x. So change in x. And we can actually now calculate this. So what I'm going to have then is now the following. m is going to be equal to 2. The change means that we're going to subtract now this y coordinate, which is going to be now negative 2, over the change in x. So if I've done this one, subtract this one. I need to do this one, subtract this one. And that's going to give me 1 minus 0. So we can see that the numerator, 2 subtract negative 2 is 4. The denominator, 1 subtract 0, that's going to give me 4. So we can see now that that's a gradient. So we can evaluate a gradient from this particular graph. We can see that the y-intercept down here is 0, comma, negative 2. So the equation of the green line is going to be y is equal to positive 4x minus 2. OK, let's have a look at this one right here, the purple line. So I'm picking a point now, and it looks to go through this point right here and this point. This one is going to be going down 1 for every 2 it goes across. So the gradient on this one would be negative 1 half. So I can say that the gradient is going to be negative 1 half. If we wanted to check that, well, let's pick a nice set of coordinates. We've got this point right here, which is going to be 2, 1. And we've got this point right here, which is going to be 4, 0. So if I looked at m, the change in y over the change in x, we're going to have the change in y. So I can have 1 minus 0, so 1 minus 0 over the change in x, which is going to be 2 minus 4. So if I just tidy that up, we're going to have 1 minus 0, which is 0. We've got 2 minus 4, which is going to give us minus 2. So we can see that gradient is negative 1 half. So I can write the equation of this line. I've got the y-intercept, and I can write this now as y is equal to negative one half x plus two. So that gives me the equation of that particular line. Let's now look at the blue one. Well, if we pick a point just here, we can see that this one is going to be going down one for every one it goes across. So we have a gradient now of negative one. If we have a negative gradient, we will start from top left and go to bottom right. If we've got a positive gradient, we'll go from bottom left to top right. Positive gradients go uphill, negative gradients go downhill. So we can say that the gradient of this one now, m, is going to be equal to negative 1 over 1, which of course gives us negative 1. If you wanted to test that, we could go ahead and just pick the coordinates. So we know these are two uh, sets of coordinates on the line. One is here, one is here. So the change in y is going to be 2 minus 1 over the change in x, which is 1 minus 2. That's going to give us 1 over minus 1. We can see the y-intercept is going to be 3, so we can write this as y is equal to negative 1x, which we just write as negative x, plus 3. Remember, sometimes you'll see that as y is equal to 3 minus x. So that is looking now at the equation of a straight line. Let's just add one on as well. Let's put one on for ourselves. Let's go ahead and just draw one. So let's say I wanted to add y is going to be equal to, and we will have now 3x. Let's do 3x minus 1. So y is going to be equal to 3x minus 1. So I've got a y-intercept here of negative 1, and I've got a gradient of 3. So if I go ahead and we will do this one, let's make this one a black one. That is going to be my y-intercept. I want a gradient of 3. So I'm going to go up 3 for every one I go across. So 1, 2, 3 for every one I go across. And I have that point just here. I go up another 3 for every one I go across. Once we have a couple of points on there, it will stay in place. And we can go ahead and just put that on. Generally speaking, if we put an equation on the graph, we go ahead and label it up. So this is just part of the graph of y 
is equal to 3x minus 1. Gradient of positive 3, y-intercept of negative 1. Let's move on and look at uh, some other things. We're asked to find the gradient of a line segment joining each pair of points. So if we want the gradient, m, that is the change in y over the change in x. So change in y, change in y over now the change in x. Or if you like, delta y over delta x or rise over run. So we need to stay consistent. If I take the first y coordinate to be 5, the second y coordinate is 1. We must then take the first x coordinate to be 5 and the second y coordinate to be 3. So in this particular case, we could say now that m is going to be 5 minus the 1 over 5 minus the 3. That's going to give me in the numerator 4, in the denominator 2, so we have a gradient of 2. So nice and straightforward, we're just looking at that. And of course, if you wanted to quickly sketch this, let's go ahead, what we would see now are these two points. So quick set of coordinate axis. We've got 3, 1, so if we put 3, 1, 3, 1 is going to be about there. And then 5, 5 is going to be about there, and we would simply draw a line. In a later video, we will look at the midpoint of that line section. Um, but for now, that's what we're going to have. So this point right here, this point right here, we can quite clearly see that is a positive gradient. If we look at the next one, we're going to say M is going to be, and this time I'm just going to go the other way. What I can do now is do 7 minus 9. So if we do that, 7 minus 9, that's the change in Y over 4 minus 10. So 4 minus 10. That's going to give us now negative 2 in the numerator and negative 6 in the denominator, which will simplify to positive 1 third. If we've gone the other way around, 9 minus 7 over now 10 minus 4, that would go ahead and give us positive 2 over positive 6, which again gives us 1 third. So that shows as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and do this one. Now we're going to have on here negative 2, subtract 6. That's for change in y. Then we're going to have negative 7, subtract 8. That is for change in x. So that's going to give us now negative 8 over now negative 15. That is going to give us now a positive gradient. And we end up now with 8 fifteenths. Remember, two negatives divided give us a positive uh, let's just do this one. Now, the change in y, so we're going to get on here. The change in y, doesn't matter which way around I go. Negative 8, subtract 0. Over now, 0, subtract negative 2. So we're going to have negative 8 in the denominator, and we're going to have positive 2, uh, sorry, positive 2 in the denominator, negative 8 in the numerator. We have a gradient now of negative 4. Again, if you wanted to sketch this, this is going to give us now negative 2 comma 0, which I'm going to put just here. And then we're going to have 0 comma negative 8, which will be somewhere a bit further down than that. That gives you some idea. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And that will look something like that. And let's just put that into place. And that's what we've got. So that's part of the line. Now this line will carry on infinitely in both directions. OK, let's look at something slightly different. We're asked to find in the form y is equal to mx plus c the equation of a straight line passing through each pair of points. For the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need a gradient and a point that it passes through. Often students say we need the y-intercept. We don't. We simply need a point that it passes through and a gradient. So let's look at this one right here. We've got two points that it passes through. All we need to do is choose one of them. But first, we need a gradient. So what I'm going to do is work out the gradient. The gradient from here is the change in y, which is 13 minus 1, over the change in x, which is going to be 4 minus 0. So that's going to give me now that the gradient is going to be 12 over 4, and that gives me now the gradient of 3. So we've got a gradient of 3, and we've got a point that it goes through. We've got two points that it goes through. I can put it through any point that I like, that one or that one. So we can use the form y is equal to mx plus c, 
or we can use the form y minus y1 is equal to m, the gradient, x minus x1. I always prefer this, and certainly as I go on with my work um, into the higher level, certainly much prefer to do it. I'm going to use this one on this particular approach, and then we will do one more on a different, uh, in a different form. So using y is equal to mx plus c, I'm simply going to substitute in the values. So let's go ahead and put these in. So we've got now 1, that's the y coordinate, will be equal now to the gradient multiplied by the x coordinate plus the value of c. So we can see from here that c will be equal to 1. So we can write this now as y is equal to m, 3x plus c, which is plus 1. So that gives me the value. Now if I'd gone for this particular approach, I would have said now y minus 1 is going to be equal to now the gradient, and that will be 3, and then we'll have x minus 0. So from here, I can simply now expand the brackets. So y is going to be 3x plus 0, and then adding 1 to both sides, y is equal to 3x plus 1. So that's using the other approach. Okay, let's do this one. Now what we need is a gradient. So the gradient, we've got now the change in y, which is minus 1. Subtract now the 9, and we're going to have that now over 7, subtract the 2. So that gives me now in the numerator, we're going to have negative 10. In the denominator, we can have positive 5. So that gives me a gradient of negative 2. I can choose any point I want. I'm going to pick now the 2, comma 9. In this one, I chose the 0, comma 1 because the algebra is slightly easier. Substituting these in to the form y is equal to mx plus c, the y coordinate is 9. That will be equal to the gradient, which is negative 2. Then we're going to have the x coordinate, which is positive 2, plus the c. So 9 is equal to negative 4 plus c. So we can add the 4 to both sides and c will give us 13. So we can write the equation of this straight line is going to be y is equal to negative 2x plus 13. And that's fairly straightforward. Again, if you wanted to use this approach, you certainly could. So nice and straightforward, all we're doing is plugging the numbers in and going from there. Let's just try one more. This one looks slightly harder. So what we're going to have then, the gradient is going to be 8. We're going to subtract now negative 2. And that is going to be over 2, subtract now negative 1 half. So let's just put that on. So if I do that in the numerator, I'm going to end up now with 10. In the denominator, I'm going to have now a total of 2.5 or 5 over 2. If we consider what I'm going to have, hopefully you can see that 10 divided by 2.5, if you wanted it as 2.5, is going to give us now 10 divided by 2.5 is 4. So now we can simply plug that in using any of the coordinates. I'm going to use the 2 comma 8, so this is m, and then we have the point 2 comma 8. So using y is equal to mx plus c, we're going to have now y, which is 8, is equal to m, then we're going to have the x, then we're going to have plus c. So 8 is equal to 8 plus c, so we can say that c is equal to 0, and this line is simply y is equal to 4x. So we're going to have now y is equal to 4x. So all I've done is simply plug that in. So let's just check that works. Well, it certainly works for these ones. If I have now y is going to be equal to 4 lots of x, 4 lots of negative 1 half is negative 2. y is equal to 4x, 4 lots of positive 2 does give us 8. To finish off, we're just going to look at graphing some straight lines using the form y is equal to mx plus c and the gradient intercept method. So what I've got now are a few grids on here, so some coordinate axis, and we'll go ahead and look at drawing some lines. So on this one, I think I'll have now y is equal to 2x plus 1. Um, I'll have y plus x is equal to negative 3. I think on this one, I'm going to have y is going to be equal to 1 half x, uh, and then we'll have plus 2. And I think I'll have y uh, will be equal to negative one third x and we'll have minus one. And then on these two, let's go ahead and do some of these. Let's put this one on. Let's say we've got now, uh, we'll have uh, y 
minus 3 and then plus 2x is equal to 0. So I'm just putting them in different forms. We'll have on this one a uh, negative y is equal to x plus 4. And then on this one we will have now, uh, we will have 1 fifth y is equal to on here, uh, 1 third x minus 1. And then finally on this one, let's just try one more. Let's say now that uh, we have, let's just do uh, y, uh, we'll go for y divided by x is going to be equal to 2. So let's just plot these now using the gradient inset method. So this one has a gradient of 2 and a y intercept of positive 1. So all we're going to do is plot this point. So that's 0, 1. It goes up 2 for every one it goes across. That's a gradient. Up 2 for every one it goes across. So we're going to come down here, down here, and down here. So nice and straightforward. Gradient of 2, y intercept of positive 1. So straight off, I can simply go ahead and draw that. And I'm just going to label that up. So I'd write next to it now that y is equal to 2x plus 1. With this one, I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So we're going to put this as y is equal to negative x minus 3. So we can see that we got a gradient of minus 1 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So if I put negative 3, this is the y-intercept. And this one is going down 1 for every one it goes across. So down 1 for every one it goes across. So we're going to be coming back up this way. Remember, these are straight line equations. Therefore, they will never go out of this particular line. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll just put a line through there. So that is going to be that line right here. And we would label that up accordingly. So I'm just going to label that up. And we can write now that this is going to be y plus x is equal to negative 3. With this one, we've got now y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. So I know that I've got a y-intercept of positive 2 and have a gradient of 1 half. It's going to go up 1 for every 2 it goes across, up 1 for every 2 it goes across. So we're going to come back down this way. So after a while, you can see this is fairly straightforward. If you have now any points that are outside that line, make sure you go ahead and check what you're doing. So that will look something like so. So labelling this up, we can write on the graph that this is y is equal to positive 1 half x plus 2. This one now, we've got negative 1 third x minus 1. So let's go ahead and locate now minus 1. This one has a gradient of negative 1 third. So it's going to go down 1 for every 3 it goes across. So down 1 for every 3 it goes across. So we're going to be coming back up in this direction. So that would be somewhere here. And that will look something like that. I appreciate this isn't brilliant because the, the grids that we've got don't have much on them in terms of those. But hopefully you can see that that is what we're going to have. Y-intercept of negative 1, gradient of negative 1 third. What else did we choose? Okay, this one we need to rearrange. Let's rearrange this into the form y is equal to mx plus c. So y is going to be equal to negative 2x plus 3. So we've got a gradient of negative 2 and a y-intercept of positive 3. There's my y-intercept of positive 3, gradient of negative 2. Down 2 for every one it goes across. Down 2 for every one it goes across. Down 2 for every one it goes across, and so on and so forth. So that's going to go somewhere back up in this direction. So let's go ahead and put that one on. We'll put that one on and we can come through this point here and like so. And we would just go ahead and label that up. Y minus 3 plus 2x is equal to 0. Okay, the next one, we could do a couple of things with this. I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by minus 1. So y is going to be equal to negative x. Then we're going to have minus 4. You could, of course, jiggle that around, add y to both sides, subtract x, subtract 4. Either way round, we have now a gradient of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 4. So there's negative 4, negative 1. We're going down 1 for every 1 we go across. So this gives us the gradient, and that'll look something like so. So let's just go ahead and put that one on. And that is the line now on here. Negative y is equal to x plus 4. 
Okay, let's just look at this one. This one, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation here by 5. Multiplying 1 fifth y will just give me y. That will give me 5 thirds x minus 5. So you've got a y-intercept now of negative 5. This one is going to go up 5 for every 3 it goes across. So we go up 5 for every 3 it goes across, and that would be the point. The gradient is 5 thirds. Up 5 for every 3 it goes across. I'm not going to squeeze any more on there, so let's just go ahead and do something like that. That is a gradient of positive 5 thirds. Y-intercept of negative 5. If we look at the next one now, we've got y over x is equal to 2. Multiplying both sides now by the x, we can say that y is equal to 2x. Gradient of 2, y-intercept of 0. So this is just the line y is equal to 2x. So if we look at that, gradient of 2, starting at the origin, we're going up 2 for every one we go across, and like so, and like so, and that will give us this line right here. So just finishing that off, we can go ahead and do that. That'll look something like that. And we would continue it now in each direction infinitely given the chance. So unless we're told a restricted, what we call domain or values that we can use, we just keep that going. So there we go. That is now the equation of a straight line in the form y is equal to mx plus c. All we need is a gradient and a point that it goes through. In later videos, we'll look at parallel and perpendicular lines and some more challenging questions, but hopefully that's given you enough knowledge to move forward with the topic.